Gaius Apuleius Diocles became the highest paid athlete of all time. In ancient Rome, chariot races were some of the most popular forms of entertainment and also provided some of the biggest opportunities for gambling and profit. The drivers themselves were paid extremely well, Gaius Apuleius Diocles, one of the most successful charioteers ever, earned an estimated 20 million sesterces during his career, an immense sum equivalent to the annual salary of over 20,000 Roman legionaries. But how did he become so rich? Gaius Apuleius Diocles was created in the Roman province of Lusitania in the year 104 AD, now Portugal. When he was 18 years old, in 122 AD, he made his racing debut in Rome with the Whites Racing Stable, but he didn't win a race until two years later. Diocles frequently competed in quadriga races, most likely in Rome's Circus Maximus. David Matz claimed that the great majority of his victories came in singles races, which may have been the most well-liked race types among both drivers and spectators. In singles races, drivers competed for themselves rather than their teams, so success was determined by personal skill and good fortune. The only documentation of his life and profession is honorable inscription created in Rome during his lifetime and another it promised upon his retirement. He raced in 4,257 four-horse races in his 24 years of racing, taking first place in 1,462 of them while coming second in a further 1,438. He set numerous records and triumphed 110 times in the race that followed the Pampa, the official opening procession. One of his preferred tactics entailed holding back until the very end, then pulling ahead of the opposition for a resounding victory. His notoriety and extremely thorough track record continue to be a crucial source for reconstructing the practices and strategies of Roman chariot racing. For a charioteer, Diocles' career lasted an exceptionally long 24 years while he raced for three of Rome's top four factions, which were distinguished by their racing colors, reds, whites, blues, and greens. At the age of 18, he joined their whites. Six years later, he shifted to the greens. During this period, he got an injury on the racetrack. Diocles had a dismal track record with the Greens. Diocles may have somehow angered the Green team management, who punished him by limiting his opportunities and depriving him use of their best horses, according to David Metz. He raced for the Reds for 15 years after only three years with the Greens, and then, at the age of 42, he retired to the little but rich town of Prust. Over the course of a 24-year career, he earned 35,863,120 sesterces in total, according to a Roman inscription. He would have received an undisclosed quantity from his management group or his owners from this. His status as a slave or free man is uncertain, as is the likely size of his total share. According to Peter Strzok, Diocles was the highest paid athlete in history due to his prize money earnings during his career. In Rome, according to Golden, Diocles' winnings would have been seen as substantial. Investors of the senatorial and equestrian classes secretly organized, funded, and managed the races. Diocles was a public hero and an example of Rome's performance culture, according to Sinclair Bell, but he was also at best a low-class citizen who may have started out as a slave or, if manumitted, a free man who still had obligations to his patron. His income would have been more than sufficient to qualify him for membership in the senatorial or equestrian orders, but his vocation disqualified him from both as someone who was infamous or socially and morally scandalous. It was dishonorable to open the compete for money in and of itself, and earning a living from it would have made it even more so, disqualifying him from many of the rights and protections of full citizenship as well as from holding any public office. Actors, prostitutes, auctioneers, gladiators, butchers, and funeral directors were also included in this group. Two jurists from the later imperial era contend that athletic tournaments are not merely amusement but rather seem important as demonstrations of Roman valor and strength, and hence argue against the infamous status of charioteers. 